Here are two examples of working with limiting reactants. The first one, lithium nitride reacts with water to form ammonia and lithium hydroxide. If 4.87 grams of lithium nitride react with 5.8 grams of water, find the limiting reactant. So here we're going to practice finding the limiting reactant. I'm going to start by setting up my stoichiometry grid the same way I always do. Mass, molar mass, and number of moles. Fill in all the values that I know. I have 4.87 grams of lithium nitride and 5.80 grams of water. I can also use my periodic table to calculate the molar mass of lithium nitride. It ends up being 34.83 grams per mole. And of course I get that because there's three lithiums. Each lithium has a mass of 6.94 and one nitrogen with a mass of 14.01. I can also find the molar mass of water. There's two hydrogens, one oxygen. And just remember, for the molar mass, you do not include the coefficient in front because molar mass is the mass per mole, not per three moles, just for one mole. So we have two hydrogens, one oxygen. That gives us a molar mass of 18.02 grams per mole. My next step is to calculate number of moles of each of my reactants. Remember, moles is mass divided by molar mass. So for lithium nitride, 4.87 grams divided by 34.83 grams per mole gets me 0 0.140 moles of lithium nitride. I do the same thing with water. Mass divided by molar mass, it ends up being 0 0.322 moles. Now you might look at this and think, well, lithium nitride has the lowest number of moles, therefore it's the limiting reactant. However, this is not always the case. Because if you look at the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation, they're not the same. So you can't directly compare number of moles. So we need another way of figuring out which one of these reactants is going to get used up first. I'm going to show you two different ways of doing that. One way is a little bit slower. One way is the shortcut. So you get to decide which way you do this. So the first way I can figure out which of these is the limiting reactant is just do your stoichiometry to find out how many moles of your product would you make. So I'm going to start with water. I have 0 0.322 moles of water. So how many moles of ammonia would that create if it all got used up? Well, if you look at the coefficient, for every three moles of water, there's one mole of ammonia being produced. So there's one-third the amount of ammonia than the number of moles of water. So we're going to divide by 3, which gets me an answer of 0 0.107 moles. Now I can do the same thing with lithium nitride. For 0 0.140 moles of lithium nitride being all used up, our ratio is 1 to 1. So for every mole of lithium nitride that gets reacted, one mole of ammonia gets produced. So the number of moles would be the same, 0 0.140 moles. So you look at this, if all the water gets used up, it'll produce 0 0.107 moles of ammonia. If all the lithium nitride gets used up, it'll produce 0 0.140 moles of water. So whichever reactant gets used up to produce the least amount of product, that's the one that's gonna get used up first. And that's gonna be our limiting reactant. 
So if we look at the numbers, this one's the smallest amount. That means water is our limiting reactant. So that's one way to figure out which one is the limiting reactant. Now I'm going to erase this, and I'm going to show you the shortcut way. So once you have the number of moles of both of your reactants, here's something simple that you can do. We're going to divide each mole amount by the coefficient. So we'll divide the lithium nitride mole amount by 1, and the water mole amount by 3. So you just divide the molar amount by the coefficient, and whichever number is smaller, that tells you what your limiting reactant is. So we can say water is the limiting reactant. Let's try another example. So in this question, we have 2 grams of copper sulfate solution reacting with 1.1 gram of sodium hydroxide. And then the question is, how much sodium sulfate is produced? So here I have copper sulfate reacting with sodium hydroxide to produce copper hydroxide and sodium sulfate. And I want to know how much of this will be produced. So when you have a question like this, you'll notice you're given mass values for both reactants. If that's the case, then you don't know which one is the limiting reactant. Whichever one gets used up first is going to limit how much of your product gets produced. So we have to do just like we did in the first example to find the limiting reactant and then using the limiting reactant we can calculate the mass of sodium sulfate being produced. So I start by setting up my stoichiometry grid, plugging in the numbers that I know, and now I will also plug in the molar mass. So I have copper sulfate has a mass of 159.62 grams per mole and sodium hydroxide is 40 grams per mole. Now I do the same thing, mass divided by molar mass gets me number of moles. So I have 0 0.0125 moles of copper sulfate and 0 0.0275 moles of sodium hydroxide reacting together. So which one gets used up first? Well, look at my coefficients, 1, 2. So divide this one by 1, divide this one by 2, get your answers. So I have 0 0.0125 for copper sulfate, 0 0.01375 for sodium hydroxide. Which number's smaller? This one. So CuSO4 is the limiting reactant. And that means I'm going to use its mole amount in my calculation. So I want to know how many moles of sodium sulfate are being produced? Well, it's going to be the same as this one. It's a one-to-one -one ratio, so the moles of sodium sulfate are the same as CuSO4. The molar mass of sodium sulfate is 142.05 grams per mole, and now I can calculate my mass by multiplying moles times molar mass. So I get 1.78 grams of sodium sulfate being produced. So the takeaway message is in a real reaction that you're actually doing, you're going to have masses of both reactants and you need to figure out which one's going to be used up first. So you have to calculate which one is the limiting reactant. Once you know which one is limiting, that is the value you use to do the rest of your stoichiometry calculations.